Page 45, Rockets. There's a few things going on here. If you've been struggling and you're just not quite getting it, this is a good time to go back and start the book again and go through all the lessons again and go through all the pieces again and review everything. Because it's only going to get more challenging and more difficult as we go on. So make sure you're comfortable before we keep going. We're adding some new things here. Uh, we got to get these down well. First thing we're adding is a new time signature. In the past, we've had 4 4 time. That was it. Now we have 3 4 time. Well, it's the same thing as 4 4 time, except you only have to count to three. There's only three beats in a measure now instead of four. But you're still counting quarter notes because the bottom number is still a four. That's the only difference. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The dotted half note, well, it's a half note with a dot behind it. So it's called a dotted half note. I guess that makes sense. A couple things to think about on the dotted. We have all kinds of dotted notes. Most any note can be dotted. Even a whole note can be dotted. And the rule for the dotted notes is the same rule for all of them. It doesn't matter what it is. And that simply means that the dot gets half the value of the note. It's like they're tied together, so it, it just makes the note last a little longer. In 3-4 time, a half note would get two counts, because a quarter note gets one, a half note gets two. Well, if a half note gets two counts, the dot gets half of that, and that's one count. So you add that count to it, and now you've got three counts total. Two for the half note, one for the dot. That's three counts total. See, the dot just extends the value out a little bit, makes it a little longer, that's all. And all the dotted notes work the same way, it doesn't matter what the note is. Look on rockets here, the first line, the last two measures. You see in the left hand, they're dotted half notes. And notice every half note has to have its own dot, because that's important. And they're going to last three counts. The half note lasts two counts, so it's one, two. And if the half note lasts two counts, something has to come on beat three. That's just the way music theory works. A note lasts a certain value, and once that time is over, something else has to happen after that, or the piece ends or something. A half note lasts two counts, so something has to come after that, unless it's the end of the piece. Well, in the third measure, the half notes last two counts. One, two, and that's it. Well, in this case, it's the dot it comes on beat three, and it lasts one count, because it's half the value of the half note. One, two, three, uh, three counts. Here, it's all three counts. That's, technically, that's how it works. Any dotted note, you can calculate it that way. It's the half value of the count. We'll talk a lot more about dotted notes. Just try not to make it too complicated. I will also tell you, to keep it simple, now that I've told you all that joke, Memorize, as if you don't have enough to memorize, memorize that a dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. Always. Doesn't matter what the time signature is, it's always the same as three quarter notes. So if you think about it that way, if you know what a quarter note gets, then you just take three times that, and that's your dotted half note. And you can do that too. That comes in handy in a number of cases, so you can do it that way. Just three quarter notes. Well, in three or four time, that's three beats. So let's look this thing over. Rockets. Two lines long. Treble and bass cliff. Three four time now. Quarter notes. Quarter rests. Dotted half notes. Look in the second measure of either line, doesn't matter. In the lower staff, you see the whole rest, and you think, wait a minute, a whole rest is like a whole note. What's going on? Well, a whole rest gets to do two things. It has two jobs. It can be the same as a whole note, whatever, but we don't have a whole note in three or four time. It's not legal. You can't have anything last four counts in three or four time because there are only three beats in a measure. But a whole rest also indicates a whole measure. Doesn't matter how many beats are in it. It's just the whole measure. So a whole rest can actually be any number of beats. 
depending on the situation. And this situation gets three counts. The whole rest gets three counts because it's the whole measure. So let's go over this one hand at a time first. Right hand first is here, quarter notes. One, two, three. One, two, rest. You come up on B3 because that's when the rest is. Second line is the same, except you have a dotted half note rather than a half note and a rest. You get a dotted, so you hold it down for three counts. Okay. Left hand, we're starting out with the C chord. Did you notice these three notes were actually a chord? You're just not playing them at the same time. It's still a chord. And then the third major is G7 chord and the C chord. Rest. And then there. Okay. Put the hands together here. One, two, three. You get the idea? You put the hands together. You go your speed, your nice and slow, no hesitations. And you should be able to do this without looking at the keyboard, at least this much of it. Then we have the dynamics. Well, it goes to the melody, which is everything except these chords. These chords that need to be soft in the background. So whatever you think loud is, forte is loud, F. This is soft. This is loud and that's soft. And the second line is soft. Oh, good luck. Whatever you think soft, it's not as soft as you can get. There's softer than this. It's just soft. That makes the chords very soft. Now, one more thing since we're making this hard anyway. Let's dive to it. When you decide on a dynamic, you have to decide what you want the melody to be. You forget everything else. We're concentrating on melody. So in the second line, what do you want the soft to be? And anything else that you have to play, like the chords, you practice and find a way to make them softer. Don't do it the other way around. Don't go, well, how soft can I play these? And I'll just play the melody louder than that. No, the melody decides what's going on and you practice and you learn to play this other stuff very soft. You need to anyway, so just work on it. So the melody gets what it needs and, and then everything else supports it. Then finally we do the speed, the moderately fast. Well, a fun piece again, I guess. they've added an important note at the bottom of the page just to keep it interesting and they're doing this to prepare you for what's coming in the book. You see so far we've stayed pretty much in C position. The only thing we've changed here is that we, that we go down one note at the bottom here. That's all we've changed. Well we got a lot of notes to play on the piano. We can't just stay in this position so we're going to start moving around. Well, you got to get used to moving around. And you'll have to look at the keyboard to move around to see where you're going. Uh, what they want you to do at the bottom is kind of get you into that moving around. So what they're saying is play rockets again, and this time do the second line an octave higher. An octave is an interval of an eighth. And remember, it's letter to letter. C to C, F to F, D to D, B to B, whatever it is. So here, instead of C, we're just going up and we'll pretend that's middle C and we go up here. So the first line is here, but the second line we're just moving everything up here. That's an octave higher. Well, you got to get there. How do I get from here to here? It depends on the situation. And we'll talk about it as we move in the hands. I usually cover that in the lessons. How can you get from here to here? In this case, there's a rest at the end of the first line. You get one beat rest. And during that rest, you need to move from here to here. You can do it one hand at a time, or both hands together. 
It's up to you on how you do it. You get one beat to get there because you don't mess up the beat because you're moving the hands. Not allowed. Uh-uh. So the last measure of the first line, you're here. One, two, rest here. Now we can look it over a little deeper and see if, so we don't have to move both hands at once. If you look at the second line, you see the left hand plays first here. The right hand doesn't play the second measure. So what you can do when you go to move is you just get the right hand out of the way and get the left hand there. And as the left hand is playing, then you put the right hand up. So you're here to rest. So I just get this out of the way and as I'm doing that, I get this. That's so I can do that. So you practice that and the speed, keep it steady, but you need to practice. We do practice hand moves in piano if we have to. Because in the left hand, you got one beat rest to get up there. You get the right hand out of the way. Then they want you to play rockets again. This time the first line is up here, octave higher. And they want you to go up a second octave for the other, which is up here. To get, so you're playing at different parts of the piano. You could do that with any of the pieces we've done in the book. You want to go back through these pieces again and do the same thing and move around? That's fine. It's good practice playing different parts of the piano. Yeah. So I'm not going to do all of that in this lesson. You can do that on your own. If you have questions, you're welcome to ask. One thing I will caution you is when you come up here, when you get high, don't lean. Don't try and stay upright as best you can. You're just twisting the body, twisting, and you reach. So I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here. Now the hands won't stay nice here. When you get up here, I mean, your left hand's pretty at an angle. Well, that's part of learning to play at different parts of the piano, because I'm down here and the right hand's at an angle. That's just part of learning to play the piano. It's, it's a different feeling. So, don't try and straighten the hand out and be, uh-uh. Just, just stay where you are and reach and do that. Here, for that. I'd like to play this with you slowly, just double check all the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the different octave things, we're just going to go through it one time. And since it's 3-4 time, I'm just going to give us three counts. I go one ready, go, and we go. And remember, I'm not doing dynamics. In the play with me, so I don't do dynamics, it's just play everything the same. You can do the dynamics and all that on your own. One, ready, go. Rest. Yes.